Alright guys, let's get back to Kenji. Okay. Hey Kenji. No answer. He continues dragging his paint-soaked brush along the large half-painted Kanji. That's pretty close to his name. Okay. That's sketched on the sheet and pencil. Kenji? Huh? What? Who is it? If this is the way he treats class members, it's no small wonder he's working on this alone. It's me, Hisao, from the- right, right. I know that man. What are you doing here, though? His dismissive attitude annoys me. Me too. He must be the type to get really focused on his work, hating to be disturbed by anyone until it's done, I suppose. While we talk, the sound of Hanako's footsteps as she walks out from behind me reminds me that she's here. How can you forget? I was just going to help with the banner. Hanako and I, that is. Hello. <laughs> um. Oh, er, hey. I guess that's okay. As soon as Hanako enters the equation, his demeanor takes a complete about face. His sudden faux hospitality is slightly unsettling. Oh, right. Women. On second thoughts, this may not have been a great idea after all. Okay. Hanako and I grudgingly set ourselves down on the opposite side of the cloth banner to Kenji, noting the several small paint tins on the ground around it. Class 3-2? Noodle stall? You guys selling noodles at the festival on Sunday? Yeah, some stalls outside or something. Or something. His non-committal nature speaks, or sparks a fair amount of suspicion on my behalf. The task at hand comes first, though. So how do you want to split this? We do borders while you do the text, or do you want to switch and do the borders? Text is mine. You do borders. He has surprisingly strong feelings on the topic. As I reach over to grab a brush, I notice Hanako's already debating between colors to use. Okay. By the time I've put brush to cloth, she's already started on a delicate pattern. Looks like my idea of taking her mind off everyone around her worked. Okay, good. With a dark blue stroke, the three of us silently get to work. Not before Kenji takes advantage of Hanako's working to lean towards me and whisper conspiratorially, though. Oh, gosh. They play the same music every time I'm talking to him. Okay, man. Why are you here? Hanako just wanted some help to find Lily, that's all. He apparently disapproves of my motivations. <laughs> I get it. It looks like I misjudged you. You're infiltrating them, aren't you? Going deep undercover? I should have guessed. Letting the truth slip by him would probably be better than outright lying or annoying him in any case. Is that why you're here? <laughs> Obviously, it sucks, but there's no better way to get intel than going in yourself. We gotta stick together, man. This is a harsh school, a harsh world. Yes, very harsh. He misses my true meaning as he leans back, satisfied I'm sympathetic to his cause. I'd better get down to work. Uh, let me move this. Okay, finished. Looks like I am too. Good job. The two of us connect up the lines of our patterns, mine being as close a copy as I could manage of hers. With a grunt, I lever myself up from the floor and look around. Aside from Hanako and myself, there's only Kenji left, finishing off a sign, as well as Lily and a couple of other, other students talking among themselves in the classroom. Oh my gosh, I have a horrible time speaking. Can you tell? Okay, <laughs> looking at my watch, it's no surprise. It's getting pretty late. Need a hand? I offer a hand to Hanako, which she uses to get herself up. As she does, I can't help but glance at her wrist. If her scars extend even to there, just how much of her body was burned? Why does he do this? He's so, like, mean, it seems like. Like, obviously he's not intending to be mean, but it's like, people notice that. Oh, I feel a pang of guilt about it. However, she quickly covers her wrist with her other hand. Looks good, doesn't it? She looks surprised for a moment before noticing that I mean the banner. Okay, I guess he played it off a little bit. Okay. <laughs> uh, it does, I guess. Her smile shows that she feels a slight sense of pride in the result, just as I do. With the floor significantly neater for the decorations being placed on the desks and shelves, it's much easier to get to Lily as we cross the room. We finished the banner. I guess that's all that needs to be done. Lily gives an appreciative nod. Thank you, Hisao. Hanako. If there's any way I can thank you. It's fine. Beats sitting in my room studying at any rate. I don't mind either. She nods, before suddenly remembering one last person. Oh, is Kenji still here? 
Just as I open my mouth, Kenji gives the answer from the other side of the room. Yeah, just finished. He carefully slides his sign onto an empty section of shelf to dry before quickly walking past us and out the door. See you, man. Bye. <laughs> um, the remaining two students say their goodbyes to Lily before taking their cue to leave as well, leaving only the three of us. Well, I guess that's everyone. I hope we don't have to do anything like that again. Working past school time? Indeed. The class's plans this year were ambitious. Maybe too ambitious. Come on, we got it done. The stall looks nice, though. She's right. It shows that a lot of work's gone into them. My, my. I'm not sure if a lot of us would be glad to hear that. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm sure a lot of us would be glad to hear that. Because I was like, why did I just... Why did they say that? Okay. At least now there's not much work to do until the festival itself. Um, it's getting pretty late. Should we go? That's probably a good idea. Are you going back to the dorms as well, Hassal? Yeah, I guess I'll tag along. The nighttime lighting really makes the gardens look quite different compared to the usual look of lush greenery. Things are much more calm. Being that it's so late, the lack of students around probably helps. The odd one or two can be seen scurrying to and from the dorms, trying to eat the most out of their approaching curfews, but no more. All that can be heard is our footsteps, in addition to Lily's cane regularly gently tapping the ground in front of her. It's nice to finally be able to relax a bit after the mad rush during school. Without even noticing it, I let out a small yawn. Tired? Yeah, still getting used to the flow of things, I guess. The, uh, thing with Shizune took me kind of off guard, though. I gripped my teeth a little at the candid mention of their rather public spat. That said, I do want to sort out what in the world was behind it. Uh, about that. <laughs> I'm sorry about it being so public. Shizune and I go back some ways. Her voice seems slightly irritated as she remembers Shizune, obviously unwilling to discuss it any further. I glance to Hanaka for her views on this, but her expression is unsurprisingly evasive and difficult to read. Either way, I guess her apologizing for it is something, even if my curiosity goes unanswered. I'll be glad once the festival is over in any case. <laughs> um, the change of topics welcome, clearing the thickening air quickly. I can imagine, my old school's festivals were a lot more low-key than this. Yamaku stresses the idea of a school community, so the staff likes to make our festivals and such special occasions. And yet the students are the one who do the work. What an unfair world. <laughs> Hanako and Lily both chuckle in agreement, savoring the fact that none of the staff are around to hear our grumbling. I suppose coming from an, a strict all-girls school helped me a bit with Yamaku. Compared to there, Yamaku is much more relaxed. That'd go away towards, uh, towards explaining her well-bred speech and behavior in any case. As we come up to the dormitories, it eventually comes time for us to leave to our respective rooms. See you, Lily. Hanako. The two both give polite nods before setting off to the women's dorms, just next to the guys. The dorms are right next to each other? Alright. As is to be expected of such an arrangement, there's a staff member casually patrolling around outside to prevent any nighttime shenanigans. Okay, that makes more sense. Walking past him, I quickly stretch my arms and rub my neck, both quite sore after having worked on the floor for so long, before walking to my room. It feels good to actually have direction, though. After so long in the hospital, the everyday facts of studying, homework, and teachers seems almost a blessing. I guess if things continue like this, my time at Yamaku might turn out okay. Adhering to the nurse's nagging voice in the back of my head, I set my alarm clock to wake me up early enough to go jogging again. I made a promise that I'm going to keep it. Besides, Emmy's bound to rattle me if I don't show up. But it's not all that bad. My morning alarm goes off very loudly in my ears, <laughs> and I flail about uselessly for a while until I remember that I decided to give morning runs another shot. I don't know if this was my greatest idea, but I'm determined to keep going. This is about my health, after all. Sure, things haven't been great for me lately, but that doesn't make- oh, what? <laughs> okay, sure, 
Things haven't been great lately for me, but that hasn't made existence so intolerable that I'm not going to try everything I can to stay healthy. Besides, it's all about asserting some kind of control over this thing, right? If I can manage that, well, I can manage anything. At least that's what I keep telling myself. Once again, it would appear that I'm not alone in my run. Emmy has apparently been here for some time. It looks like she's already worked up a good sweat. Just when the heck does she come down here anyway? Oh, it's you. I'm surprised to see you again. Why's that? Well, not many people actually manage to come back for a second try. Well then, I'm better than everyone. <laughs> okay, she frowned seemingly, annoyed by a passing thought. Like the rest of the track team, for instance. Still, it was only supposed to be on a volunteer basis, so it's not that big of a shock. And I guess it's pretty early in the morning. A shrug, and suddenly it appears that she's forgotten what she was talking about. <laughs> Does anybody have a friend like that? I used to have a friend like that, and it was like... They were bipolar, it seemed like. Um, the frown disappears entirely, and she seems to snack back to her previous train of thought. So, come on then. What? You're here to run again, right? Well, yes. So come on. Running backwards on this track again. <laughs> okay, I find myself suddenly grabbed and yanked onto the track. Things seem to be set on mirroring yesterday's run. That is, I seem to be struggling while Emmy moves with an effortlessness that I find enviable. It's incredibly bothersome to be so easily worn out. I know I should be patient, work towards things gradually, but... <laughs> okay, I'm so nervous that something's about to happen to us. Okay. It's difficult to stay positive about this. We round the track and start on our second lap. Emmy seems to have grown impatient keeping pace with me and begins to pull away. This is where I gave out yesterday. Will I be able to do more? All right, we'll take it easy. I let Emmy go with her own pace and she doesn't show mercy, pulling half a lap ahead of me in an instant. I don't blame her. I mean, it's not as if I'm really putting up any sort of real fight out here, is it? Instead, I'm just running at a steady pace, which is what I should be doing, right? There's no need to go pushing my limits at this stage of the game. God, is it even worth it? As we finish the second lap, I break off again. Emmy keeps going and it almost seems to me that she's disappointed. Well, that's stupid. I don't have anything to prove to her. Come to think of it, I've got nothing to prove to myself either. I'm just fine the way I am. <laughs> Gosh, why is he so upset, it seems like. Okay. And what I'm not is a runner. This was probably a bad idea. Maybe there's something else I can do instead of this. Getting up early sucks anyway. There's gotta be some other way to keep healthy. Walking, maybe? Nice afternoon walks. Yeah, that sounds good. Running isn't for me. I wave to Emmy and head back to my dorm room. I'll think of something else later. Back in my room, the first thing I see is a familiar row of medication bottles lined up on top of my dresser. It makes me depressed as usual. It's annoying. I thought it was okay. I thought I had made my peace with this thing, gotten over it. But what I really did, I allowed myself to forget that I have a problem. Being here really reminds me of the reality, and trying to fight against it just hurts. Reflecting on it is only going to do so much. I've done this before for months. It seems like it's time to get over it. If I allow myself to forget that my life is definitely not going to be as long as those of others, I won't get anywhere. My life may be different from others, but it is a life in progress. That's how I'll rationalize it. I down the usual handful of pills, trying to push the sudden dreary feeling out of my head. Then I prepare to head out to class early as usual. As I step into the hallway, I notice Kenji coming around the hallway corner, stealthily making his way over to his own room with a large bag. As he sneaks past me, soundlessly like a ninja, hiding in plain sight, I call out to him. Hey. He jumps at the sound of my voice. How do you not see me? Oh, hey, man. I didn't notice you there. I'm really tired. Or just ridiculously blind. Like, it doesn't even make sense. That shouldn't be legal. Oh, wait. Legally blind. Um, wait, it's legal. Oh, my God. Forget that. Forget that I even said that. <laughs> Sounds so stupid. Okay, I think it's more like he didn't see me, but that's not the issue. Where have you been this early? Shopping? 
No, I wasn't shopping. Sometimes I have to visit the math teacher. Yeah, I figured it would be a good idea to find out when the next exam is, since he tells you in advance if you want. So then, what's in the bag? I thought I'd go shopping while I was outside. I need more supplies to continue the fight against the vast feminist conspiracy. He just said he didn't go shopping. Uh, okay. I thought you didn't go outside. I wear a hat now. What? I decided not to point out that he's not wearing a hat. An awkward silence settles between us, and then Kenji breaks it by pushing his door open slowly, releasing a cracking sound into the air that only makes the moment seem more awkward. He sets the bag down inside his room and then closes the door. I'm surprised you went out of your way to find out a test state. Trying to take advantage of an opportunity to study is pretty diligent. I never study. Oh. <laughs> I just wanted to know when the next test day was. I'm still gonna take it, duh. I just needed to know so that... What? I just needed to know so I know what day I can't afford to skip class. Okay. He usually sends out updates on that crap by phone, so I had to step out and check up on it. And why do you have to go out when you can get it on your phone? Um, I don't carry a phone. What do you mean you don't carry a phone? You mean you just leave it at home? Nah, I don't use phones. I don't have a phone. Phones. I have no phone. <laughs> He's so weird. Why don't you have a phone? How can you not have a phone? No phone at all? No phone? I just don't like phones. Actually, I'm kind of scared of them. I don't know why. I think it's just some kind of repressed trauma. But basically, when I hear a phone, I get nervous. It's my darkest secret. It's not really a secret. You just told me. I have two theories on it. I either have some fear of receiving some identified, ominous, life-altering doom call, or I was beaten with the phone in the past. Beaten so badly I can't remember it. Beaten in the head. Well, where else could I get beaten with a phone that would make me unable to remember it? <laughs> the butt? Um, unexpectedly logical. I feel very depressed now. <laughs> Sensing this conversation is more or less over, Kenji opens his door again and prepares to head inside. Yeah, I'm going to sleep, dude. Have a good one. Class is going to start in like 20 minutes. I already did something today. Too tired to go to school. Hey, you need some lip balm? I accidentally bought two because I thought the store had started selling individual AA batteries. Thanks, but no thanks. Whatever, man. Wh why would you think that they were selling batteries like that? Do they do that? Okay, he swiftly enters his lair, finally letting me go to the class. That made no sense. <laughs> Every single time I talk to him, I feel like I'm, I'm getting dumber. Um, for a change, I'm not among the first ones to come to morning class. Instead, almost everyone seems to be here already. I recognize most of my classes by their... Oh, wait, most of my class by their faces now. Um, though the names escape me still. The class goes on lazily. I think I'm starting to get into the rhythm of the school. I've even stopped worrying about taking notes and being overly attentive. The first days, I was pretty high-strung in class. Muto finishes his lecture about electricity early, but continues without a pause about the festival. So as you know, the festival is on the day after tomorrow. <laughs> Why couldn't you just say two days from now? Um, I hope everyone's projects are going to be successful this year. Have a good time, but also come Sunday. Please keep the meaning of this festival in your minds. Games and fried food. Misha is kind of like, ugh, I don't know. She reminds me of people that I don't really enjoy being around. Um, everyone bursts out in laughter, and so do I. Yes, thank you, Mikado. But what I meant was, okay. Okay, the remainder of his sentence is buried beneath the ring of the lunch bells, and everyone starts packing their things. Muto deliberates for a moment, but since almost nobody seems to pay attention anymore, he gives up and sits down. <laughs> it's crowded in the hallway, and loud, or as crowded as hallways in this school probably get. Most of the students seem to be heading down for the cafeteria. Hisao! I'm gonna make you a one-time-only, super-extra-special lunch offer. Emmy's homemade lunch boxes and the privilege of enjoying them in private with two bombshell beauties. Who? Her overly flirtatious sales pitch echoes in the hallway, a remarkable feat since it's full of people. 
Emmy strikes a very confident looking pose as though as an attempt to one up her own ridiculousness, puffing her very modest chest and making the V for victory sign with her hand. Sounds delicious. To what do I owe this honor of being invited? You stood there looking really lost and sad, so I thought you could use some company. That is probably the most depressing reason imaginable. So how about it? You're probably really lonely and would eat that awful cafeteria food all alone otherwise. Actually, couldn't I have gone with Lily and Hanako? Like, eh. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sure. I'll have your lunch offer. With pleasure. <laughs> Let's go to the roof. The roof? Why the roof? Because that's where we eat lunch. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. Uh, but I don't know. It seems dangerous as well. And if I don't get up there then she'll probably wander off, and then I just know she'll go hungry because she never eats... Oh, she never packs a lunch for herself. I was so confused for a second. Okay, who will? Come with me. Without answering my question or waiting for a response, she grabs me by the arm and drags me through the hallways. I attempt to make conversation on the way. Why do you have an extra lunch? Amy smiles guiltily. Actually, it's yesterday's lunch. You're giving me old food? So rude. I slipped in a run at lunch and forgot to eat it. Huh. The stairway to the roof is a little di <laughs> dilapidated, but it's clearly been used recently. At the top of the stairs is a door, complete with missing padlock. I wonder who the intrepid individual was that removed the lock. Emmy shoves the door open and steps beaming into the sunlight. Hey, yeah, we know who she is. I uh, don't remember her name. Suddenly, a tall, dark stranger appears out of nowhere, standing imposingly in front of us. Emmy flinches back, almost falling back down the stairs. Isn't it like Rin or something? Hello. Yipes, you scared me, Rin. Yeah, it is. Wait, isn't she... Hello. Noticing that Rin is speaking to me, Emmy looks curiously at me. You two know each other? I look confusedly at Emmy. She's the friend of yours? Rin has turned her gaze towards the clouds drifting above the school. I didn't know you even knew this person, Emmy. <laughs> the awkward silence lasts only for a few seconds until Emmy lets out a tiny giggle, shrugging the coincidence off. I invited Hisao for lunch. If you know him, that's just better. Oh, does this mean I don't get food? Or did you invite him for lunch without the lunch? Uh, neither. I have food for three. Nice thinking. They walk to the other end of the roof while I stay at the clock tower for a while, taking in the atmosphere. There's nobody else but us here. I guess the roof's not as popular as it is in other schools. A few run-down benches. Okay, well, the roof has a fence. That's, that's kind of safe. <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking the entire time. That would be, like, really, like, dangerous to have people up there. It's, it's not good. Um... A few rundown benches and tables are scattered around the edges, perhaps in an attempt to make the rooftop look less desolate. The small pebbles covering the roof rattle beneath our feet. I peek through the chain link fence to take a look at the school grounds and beyond. Students are strolling in pairs and groups around the quadrangle at the cafeteria. Um, a few delivery trucks are driving past the school towards the convenience store nearby. Somewhere a watchdog barks at a passerby. Somehow, when I look towards the town center, the small town fill strikes me very strongly, almost palpably. The hectic lifestyle of big metropolises seems so far away and foreign here. Nobody has to run to catch a bus like their life depended on it, or get their senses overloaded by the neon lights and traffic jams. I feel surprisingly optimistic about this new life of mine, looking at my new hometown, even if it's going to be mine for only one short year. Finding out about my illness and having to move away from home all came so suddenly, I haven't had time to think about how I feel about it. When I step out of the shadow of the clock tower to the open, f I feel warmth touching my back. The sun shines from a perfectly clear, cerulean sky. A cool breeze sweeping over the rooftop makes me shiver, but only briefly. The wind carries the scent of trees and flowers, not smog, and the car exhausts like it used to, just a few weeks ago. Emmy settles on a bench with Ren in tow and produces one big and two small lunch boxes from her bag. Come on, Hisao, what are you waiting for? She's beckoning me to join them, making room on an already small bench. 
Okay. <laughs> I seat myself on the corner of the bench to take as little space as possible. It's pretty cramped, but somehow all three of us fit on it. Impressive view. Emmy suppresses a giggle and places a lunchbox in front of Ren and hands another lunchbox to me. Here you go. Lunch is promised. Homemade, no less. I'm impressed. Wow, this looks really good. Thanks. I make it myself when I can. Conversation dies off as I set about the business of feeding myself. Taking a few bites, I glance up and notice Rin deftly opening the lunchbox and popping a fork full of food into her mouth, using only her feet. Even though I've seen it before, I can't help but be impressed at her dexterity. It's also a reminder of the sort of place I am in right now. Okay. That's- I feel like that would be really- Like, aren't they already cramped on the- on the bench? How is she, like, lifting her foot up and doing all of that? Uh, will I ever get used to sights such as this? I can't decide if getting used to such a thing would be a good thing or a bad thing either. Does getting used to this place mean that I'm giving up on being a normal person? Or does it just mean that I'm becoming more understanding about those around me? Uh, I'd guess the latter. I'm distracted from my thoughts by the sight of Emmy tearing into her lunch as if it had insulted her ancestors. You seem pretty hungry. Don't say that to a girl. Emmy looks up, mouth half full, and swallows before nodding. My morning run always works up an appetite, which is great because I burn through the lunch pretty quickly. Helps me get my girl. Helps me keep my girlish figure. Um, what would happen if you'd lose it? Would you become a man? <laughs> I very nearly choke on my lunch, trying not to laugh. It's a figure of speech. Does your figure have to run in the mornings too? Do you always talk like this? talk like what? Oh, okay, they both said that. I think that answers my question. Never mind. So, uh, I struggle to think of small talk and settle on the obvious question. How do you two meet? Rin seems content to let Emmy answer this question. Someone in the housing department thought we'd complement each other very well. So, we were assigned rooms next to one another. Complement each other? Like shoes in a suit. Oh, okay, I get it. Because one of them has arms, the other doesn't, and one of them has legs, and the other doesn't. Okay. Huh? Emmy giggles at my confusion. At least I think so. Put us together and we've got all our limbs. Get it? Ah, okay. So I started helping Rin get ready in the mornings, and that was that. I mean, you can't help someone get dressed every morning and not get along. I see. Rin chooses this moment to interject. I have trouble with shirts. Right, that seems fairly obvious. Really? Kind of. This isn't helping, but at least Emmy seems to find the whole thing funny. That, combined with the fact that Ren is genuinely curious, makes me feel slightly better, and yet confused. I mean, you've got no arms, so uh, putting on a shirt seems like one of those things that would be difficult. You know what? I'm gonna just stop talking now. <laughs> It'll save me a lot of trouble in the long run. Rin nods in what I suspect is meant to be a sage manner. I see. The conversation dies as I turn my attention back to my lunch. It's really quite good. Emmy finishes her lunch first and makes a contented noise. Ah, that was good. <laughs> as she busies herself with cleaning up her lunch, Rin speaks up. I'm thirsty. Oh, I almost forgot about that, sorry. With the flourish, she reaches into her bag and removes a trio of juice boxes. She tosses me one that appears to be cranberry juice, one to Rin that appears to be some kind of strawberry milk. Ew! <laughs> I just don't like milk, sorry. That, that kind of grossed me out. Complete with pink color scheme, and keeps an equally pink box of some kind of fruit punch for herself. Rin dexterously stabs her, sh stabs her straw through the top of her box and begins to drink. I'm once again impressed by how flexible she is, but this time I keep my comment to myself. Somehow I don't think either Emmy or Ren are the sorts of people to think twice about the way they work around their particular <laughs> their particular disabilities. Sorry. Ren especially so. Indeed, she gives off the impression of being entirely unaware that she's missing any limbs at all. Whether or not that's a, con a conscious decision is another matter. I'm honestly not sure. So, Hisao, how do you like it up here? Hmm? It's quite nice, actually. I like high places for the view. Thanks for inviting me up here. And for the lunch, too. Emmy grins a thousand watt grin, pleased by my response, I suppose. No problem. Feel free to eat with us next time, too, okay? 
I won't make you a lunch, but you can bring your own up here. No lunch service? I don't know. Emmy looks mock offended. <laughs> Trying to take advantage of my good nature? The nerve. She giggles. Well, if that's your answer, I guess Ren and I will just keep eating lunch all alone. I'm suddenly assaulted by the most heart-rending puppy dog eyes I've ever seen as Emmy pouts. Kidding. I was kidding. I'd love to eat lunch up here again. Good location and the company's okay, too. Emmy frowns a bit at my declaration of okay, but seems happy enough that I've accepted her invitation. <laughs> I guess this makes us friends now. Or at least acquaintances. Why does it ring so fast? I don't get that. I guess... I don't know. Some schools have different bells. I had, like, one bell that sounded for everything, and it wasn't, like... Sometimes it wouldn't even ring for certain things. Like, you just had to know where you were supposed to be. Okay. Lunch bell rings, signaling a return downstairs. Rin, you didn't finish your lunch again. I wasn't that hungry. If you don't eat more, you're gonna fade away. <laughs> Rin shrugs, as if this is an acceptable risk. Come on, we'd better get going. The three of us head down the stairs together. Um, the afternoon class passes. Once again, I find myself without a plan for something to do after school. So I head to the library to return a couple of books I finished reading. Oh no, I what? I just realized. What? I'm sorry. What?